You know, MSI was going to call this the cane-like, but we wouldn't let them have the licensing. This is the MSI X99 godlike motherboard. This is the X99A godlike motherboard. And as you can see, it is one of the most loaded X99 motherboards for gaming on the planet, but you can use it for, you know, stuff other than gaming. But really, the aesthetic is all gaming. The ID is uh, red. It got the Dragon logo on there. Really fancy heat sinks. And we have the, the godlike shield that goes above the I.O. on the back. And then we have some plating that goes around the uh, PCI Express expansion slots. And if you notice, the PCI Express expansion slots are all around them is, is reinforced with metal. And they've also been soldered on there tough because you're going to use big graphics cards. But really, the thing that makes this the flashiest are the flashy lights. So you've got some lights and you've got lots of different color options here and you can mix and match and that sort of thing. So we have the, you know, two killer NICs on the back. Plus we have wireless AC on board. The max, theoretical maximum is 867 on the wireless AC. And that is largely going to depend on all the other devices you have. You have to make sure that all your stuff is fast enough. If you've got like the top tier wireless AC stuff, you might be able to hit that, might be able to. There, there's some packet prioritization. The stuff knows when you're streaming and knows when you're gaming online, and it will arrange that to be higher uh, as far as the packet priority goes. It's standard quality of service stuff that you've seen on a gazillion different routers out there, but now it's right here on the motherboard. You can go on and play with the software and, you know, change it if you like as, as well and set up different application profiles or whatever. Let's talk about Audio Boost 3 for just a moment. So, uh, what they're doing here is they're, they've gone crazy with the audio. On the back, we have, a, you know, a quarter inch or a 6.35 millimeter jack. And everything on, everything around here looks gold-plated craziness. This thing is amplified. And it's made for, like, studio-quality headphones. And it sounds pretty good. I played around with it. It's actually, they've got a decent deck and a decent amp on board here. It's a pretty decently clean sound that's decent. There's also golden audio jacks all on the, on the back for your, you know, your different speakers and your mic input and that sort of thing. Um, mic sounds decent as well. Now on the front, there is um, a port, of course, and they can't really guarantee the quality of that port, but they have given you the option to use the amps. They have a couple different amps. There's like dual headphone amplifiers on, on the motherboard, but they've given you the option to throw a switch um, unfortunately, the switch is on the board, so yeah, you'll have to decide when you're building if you're going to be using the back headphone amplifier. You want, the, you know, the port on the back or you want the port on the front because it, it'll give you one or the other. If you have a, you know, a case that has really good, high-quality audio uh, inputs on the front, maybe that'll be okay. Most cases do not have that. They just throw whatever they can in there. It's almost an afterthought. that They give you something okay, but plus you get that cord going through the middle of your case. It's, it may pick up some static or noise. It's just... Always better to do it on the back or using an external device or something like that. The PCB layer has been isolated. As far as the uh, DAC goes, they're using the uh, ESS ES9018K2M DAC. And uh, then we've got two amplifiers. Now, the op amps cannot be removed. So I would have liked to have seen that. That would have been nice if you could swap out the op amps. But they're, they're soldered on, so there's that. And we've got the Chemicon audio capacitors on board. So it's a pretty complete audio package. So the Hymic is the software solution package that they've given us. Now it's going to give you like simulated surround and that sort of thing. And for some people who want surround but want to use like a good pair of headphones with just two speakers, you may elect to use something like this. I am not for simulated surround at all. You got a decent pair of headphones. It, you should be able to do it just fine. But you know what? You have the option now if you want to run the software. The thing that I like the most about the Nahimic software is they have a noise removal algorithm just for the microphone because most mics that you plug up to the uh, motherboard, I usually prefer doing it with USB because it's higher quality, but this one sounds pretty good. And then you can run it through that and it will help a lot. So all you guys who are jumping into games being like, hey, can you give me some backup? And you're like, what the hell did you just say? That could help you a little bit. They've given us a number of next generation storage options. You know, SATA is now becoming slow compared to some of these new options. So we've got M.2, right? Uh, and then we've got SAT Express, which is basically the same speed as M.2, but allows you to use a 2.5 inch uh, form factor instead of a, uh, you know, the tiny M.2 thing, thing. Uh, and then we also have M MSI's um, Turbo M.2 and MSI's U2. Yeah, it's just a, basically a U2 host card, which can give you up to 32 gigabytes per second. When you're overclocking um, on an X99 platform, you can actually mess around with the strap and sometimes get better results. And they have an OC engine, which has a few different strap points that allow you to easily change that from 100 to 125 to 167. 
play with those three when you're doing your overclocks and see if you can achieve different results. Just get out your calculator and do it manually, man. Or you can play with some of their auto-tuning software if you want to. I usually like to do it by hand when you're getting serious about this kind of stuff. Uh, but it's nice to see that they've given some attention to the, um, you know, BC, BLCK, uh, or BCLK, I'm sorry, overclocking, my brain, uh, rather than just doing it with the multiplier. So one other thing that they've done for the audio to really make sure that you have a good audio experience is um, they have a dedicated USB port with USB audio power. So they say it basically just ensures that you have an even clean five volt signal the entire time so that there's no fluctuations whatsoever. It's dedicated. If there's other stuff going on, it's not gonna fluctuate, it's never gonna dip. And uh, that's gonna ensure that you get the best signal going out to your external uh, DAC and amp combo like this or just your external DAC that you're using. So. That'll be uh, handy. I like the fact that they've given us, you know, decent stuff on board, but you know, they know some people are going to get this and they've already got audiophile gear, so they want to make sure that uh, it works for them as well. I didn't really notice much difference between a regular USB port in my tests, but I didn't exactly saturate the USB bus. So I imagine if I plug 30 things in and run another test, it may be a little different. So I'll, I'll try that out and, and let you guys know. Uh, guys, I'm just going to mention the UEFI because it's extremely full-featured. You can mess with your fan controls. You can set up profiles and all that sort of thing. Uh, it's probably one of the most ridiculous UEFIs I've ever seen. Full-color backgrounds. You know, it's it's just giant dragon greets you when you first jump in. And you have access to, you know, lots of stuff there. But you guys can go in and get nerdy if, and go back into the old school, just controlling everything if you wanted to. Uh, a lot of people will just be able to go to the main screen or the easy motor. I forget what they call it. Click BIOS for, I don't know. You go to the main screen and, and control a lot of things that way, but if you wanted to get nerdy, you can. Um, the hardware monitor is nice. Board Explorer is really nice because it, it'll help you identify everything on the board. Uh, but I do really like their different uh, you know, controls for, for fan speed and that sort of thing. I like the fact that you can do that in the UEFI because sometimes I don't want to do that with software. I want the UEFI to say, hey, the CPU is getting this hot. Let's ramp up the fans and you can set up all the different profiles. If you want it to be quiet, if you want it to be cool, whatever you want, you can set that up. That's a very quick and ugly UEFI overview. Some other software, they've got the MSI gaming app. It allows you to pick three different, you know, OC methods, silent gaming or OC, and it'll, you know, just basically give you a sort of a generic overclock in all those different ways. Silent, it'll tune it down a little bit. And then, you know, in the, in the software and Windows, uh, they've got the command center that allows you to mess around with the fan controls and, you know, fast boot and all that sort of thing. Are right, you guys are hearing that buzz. That is uh, the fans wrapping up because I'm showing you guys the overclock that we got. It was pretty easy to achieve right there. 1.27 volts only and uh, 4.5. So very decent and respectable. Very easy, actually, manually. All right, let's check out the software that comes with the system. Now, first off, let's take a look at the uh, the MSI gaming app, and you can mess with your GPU clock and your uh, CPU clock. You can click here to ramp up the fans. Then we have the different OC modes. Uh, you know, OC is for the, the highest one gaming and then silent mode, depending on what you want to do. And then over here, uh, you can click on this. Show some different graphs if you like, you know. Hey, let's do uh, all that. Yep. Yeah. All right, then there is uh, this mode here. It's kind of like a really bubbly basic version of Lux or Flux. So you can come in and hit I rest. Oh, there you go. Gaming. Customize it to your heart's content. Uh, it's not as full featured as, as Lux in the sense that you can't actually change it to go with different times of day. So let's put it back to default. Close that out. Now let's take a look at the um, you know different LED options here we have on this board. They're kind of ridiculous. So it'll also work with other MSI stuff, like we have the MSI, uh, you know, G GTX 980. This is the WinForce edition. Uh, 980 Ti will work with this, and uh, then you can control the LED lighting on both of those and go crazy. You can control all the LEDs, or you can control each LED individually, controlling, you know, just the motherboard, and then the graphics card. So pick your colors. You do rainbow, all these different colors you can do here, uh, and then you have several different modes here. So for the for the motherboard. You have a few extra modes, you know, like breathing, flashing, all, all kinds of different things. Wave and rainbow are fun. Random, it just kind of flashes around. And then for the uh, NVIDIA GTX 980, you have a few as well. I kind of like breathing. It makes the logo light, breathe, and that sort of thing. So there's that for all the crazy lighting effects. And there's also an app to play around with this. If you want to use the, the Mystic Lighting app, you can do that on your, uh, on your tablet or your smartphone or whatever. All right, now let's take a look at Command Center. Command Center is a very full-feature program. 
you can come in and overclock you know the cores individually if you like uh, change the multiplier even change the base clock you also have full fan control. You can do smart mode so that it ramps up. You know, you can pick which fan does what. You can have it ramp up whenever the temperature gets to a certain thing. Uh, you can go into manual mode and just say, hey, I want all the fans to run like this, whatever you want. You can do a fan tuning program. There's your CPU voltage right there. RAM frequencies. Frankly, this is a bit big and bubbly for me. I would have preferred smaller fonts and smaller stuff so they can fit more on one screen so I wouldn't have to move around so much. RAM disk is really awesome. It will allow you to allocate unused RAM, or you know, some of you guys who have like 64 or 32 gigabytes of RAM, you're not using all of it. You can allocate that and use it as a really fast uh, hard drive, and it'll also let you just use it for you know Chrome cache, which is makes Chrome ridiculously fast. And then we have the OC Genie, that will um, essentially give you an overclock. We tried this out. We got 4.3. We got 5.5 or 4.5 on our own without much trouble at all. So you can play with this and see what you get, but if you're really serious, I would always recommend doing it manually, and you can you know, play with it right here first if you like, then open up 8064, 80, ADA 64, and test it out. Get in there in that voltage. You have all sorts of advanced options here for voltages, all your RAM timings, and everything. Pretty much full control right here uh, with this software called the Command Center. To sum it up, this is one hell of a loaded motherboard probably too much for most of you guys out there but if you want to run a gazillion different things and have the lighting effects and just have a motherboard that just says this is my motherboard to everyone that walks in then this might be the motherboard for you for a lot of us it's going to be a just a bit much but is there such a thing as a bit much i don't know see you guys in the comments